This one strategy I'm gonna share with you in this video literally made my client, let's call him John, thousands of dollars from implementing this one thing. So hopefully you can relate to this. Uh, John had you know, been playing these home games for a very long time. So he's playing with the same players every week, week in and week out. And he sees this amazing opportunity, right? Because, you know, typical home games, if you watched my last video, um, you, know, you know that the way home games play, right? People are crazy, they're loose, playing all sorts of hands, you know, jack seven suited in a re-raised pod and they're flopping, you know, rivering two pair, calling down to the river with third pair. It's a home game, that's how people play. So you see all this opportunity, right? And maybe you're in a spot where you're not getting the results you feel like you deserve, and it's frustrating because you see these players playing terribly, you know you're better than them, and there's just this kind of like blockade. So John hit me up, he wasn't really focused on achieving the results that he really uh, wanted to. So he wasn't keeping records, right? You know, what gets measured gets managed. He wasn't keeping records. He would kind of have these break-even periods. Maybe he has some ups and downs. He'd win, 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 and then you know, in one session just completely capitulate and lose it all. And he would never really see these big improvements. He got frustrated in big pots, like unsure what to do, left guessing, right? Like, and it's kind of depends on the player type. Like I've worked with people on, on, on both sides, but typically people fall into one of these two categories. Either they get bluffed too often and people play crazy maniac, like aggressive style in home games and they just get bluffed because you know they, they, they call down and then they, they have like some decent top pair hand and then some guy makes a big bet and they don't know what to do and they just fold and they show, get shown a bluff. Or what happens is people call down too often when they're beat. Right? So they're playing against these players that are aggressive and some guy hits a hand and then they find themselves paying these people off and losing big pots. John was kind of the latter type, but he called down at the wrong times, but he also missed value from big hands, which is a very common problem, right? Like bet sizing, not necessarily knowing how to time it right, which hands to bet, not really getting value from his big hands. And so it's really frustrating because ultimately this led to him like breaking even over a long period of time. So to me, the key strategy I wanna share with you that really helped him was this is symptoms of a bigger problem, right? So like, think about it like, you know, you go to the doctor. The doctor says, you know, you have um, high cholesterol, take this statin to lower your cholesterol. That's treating the symptom, right? The, 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 the root cause of the problem is diet, lifestyle, exercise, et cetera, right? So the, the root cause of the problem of, of having high cholesterol is a diet. So if you're taking like a pill to supplement your, like, you know, lower your cholesterol, you're not curing the root cause of the problem. And so my job as a coach is to get in there and figure out with my clients, like, you know, what is the root cause of, of these issues that I see people commonly struggle with, especially in home games, where players play a certain way, they're very aggressive, the action is packed, people are, you know, raise, call, call, re-raise, call, 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 and then, you know, you bet the flop, call, call, and then you pick up the action on the turn in a three-way pot when it's re-raised and the pot's five grand and then you start playing poker. Like, that's like a typical hand you see in a home game and you never see that in a casino, right? So, um, it's a different environment and you have to be able to adjust, which I, I talked about in my last video. Um, so when John comes to me with something like this, I know that he's telling me things that I see patterns of, but I'm seeing high cholesterol, high cholesterol, high cholesterol, and I'm going back to diet, 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 diet. So these are symptoms of a problem, right? Uh, getting bluffed too often, calling down when he's beat, not getting value from his big hands, um, feeling like you know he misses the flop with a strong hand. This is a very common one, very common one. Um, you know, you re-raise pre-flop with ace king, people always ask me, re-raise pre-flop with ace king or ace queen, you don't know what to do pre-flop necessarily, like which hands do I re-raise with and which positions. Maybe you figure that out or you just kind of guess. Re-raise pre-flop with ace-king and the flop comes down, jack-7-4. You don't know what to do, you bet, they call, and then the turn comes and, uh, what do I do? I'm out of position, do I bet, do I bluff, do I value bet, you know, do I check, do I check fold, do I check call? And it's just like, I don't know what to do. Like deer in headlights, right? So these are all symptoms. What is the root cause of the problem? The root cause of the problem is hand reading, right? So think about it. What you're trying to do in every hand you play is figure out what your opponents have. Like what types of hands does this individual player have? Now there's a lot that goes into that. It's not as simple as, you know, they raise preflop, they have this hand. It's, you know, what is my history with that player? What is the profile of that player? What is the mood of that player? Are they winning or losing? Are they tilted? What is their stack size? What do I know about this player? What is my history? With but all of these things, you put them all together and you try and figure out what your opponents are likely to be holding in any given spot, right? Once you know that information, like if you determine with a high degree of accuracy that your opponent is likely to be bluffing, right? You look at all the hands they could play this way. Let's say, they, you know, they bet the flop, they, bet, they check the turn, they bet the river. So you, you put all that together, you say like, what types of hands take this action? You can have these types of value hands and these types of bluffs. 
If there's more bluffs than value, you know you should be calling, right? But one, the key is to get to the point where you can identify the types of hands your opponent plays that way. Because once you do that, it's easier to figure out whether you should be double barreling the turn, whether you should bet big or whether you should bet small, whether you should bet for thin value or you should proceed with caution and just check call with your hand depending on the board texture and the situation. So hand reading is the first principle. It's the way to approach poker from a fundamental level to get better at the process of playing poker. And once you do that, the rest of your decision-making process becomes a lot easier. So what I focus on with clients and what I teach is hand reading. And I use a process that I'm gonna share with you today, give you an intro into like the way that I think about this process to hopefully simplify it for you, okay? So it's called a hand range funnel. And I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download a PDF that walks you through this process for free. And hopefully it'll help you on your journey, okay? There's also a, a link to have me help oversee your journey too, if that's something you're interested in, you want me to walk you through this process as well, okay? So there's links in the description below. So imagine when you see someone cooking, or you're cooking, you're, you're baking a cake, you know, you're pouring liquid into this cylinder-like funnel that takes liquid from a glass and pours it into the cake mixture. And you take a funnel to do that so that the liquid doesn't spill everywhere and splash and, and go all over the place. It goes directly into the little uh, container that you want the liquid to go into, right? Okay, so that funnel is how I want you to start to think about hand ranges. You're like, why? We're not cooking, we're playing poker. Okay, so bear with me, right? Funnels start very, very wide, right? Like if you can imagine the top of a cylinder-like funnel, they're very, very wide at the top, and they're very, very narrow at the bottom. And a hand range, right, is basically all the types of hands any player could have in a given situation. And your job when you're playing poker is to narrow that range down until you get to just a few hands, right? Like a, they could have a few hands for value, let's say you're on the river. They could have a few hands for value and a few bluffs, right? So there's not that many hands they're gonna have on the river. They're not gonna have every combination of every hand because they raised pre-flop, they bet the flop, they bet the turn, they bet the river, your job is to narrow down their range until you get to a few hands they can have. So the top of the funnel is very, very wide. So let's say someone is dealt in the, the hand pre-flop. They're dealt in under the gun. They don't take any action yet. At the top of the funnel, they can theoretically have 100% of hands because they were dealt in. They could have seven deuce, they could have aces, they could have nine, 10 suited, they could have jack four offsuit. You don't know. They can have every single hand. So the funnel is very, very wide. Right Now let's say that player raises preflop under the gun. Well, suddenly they can't have 100% of hands because they raised under the gun preflop. They're not gonna have jack four offsuit. They're not gonna have nine deuce offsuit. They're not gonna have king three offsuit. So the simple act of raising preflop, depending on the player, depending on the position, depending on the situation, depending on the stack size, depending on a myriad of other factors, but the single act of someone raising the pot preflop means they can no longer have 100% of hands. They're not gonna raise preflop with 100% of hands in every position, every situation, every time. Nobody does that. So, therefore, you can narrow this funnel down from 100% to whatever percentage that individual player is raising in that particular spot, in that moment, given the player type, with that stack size, given their history, given their mood. Okay, so some players, when they raise under the gun, can have 10% of hands, like, you know, eights plus, and, you know, ace queen, and ace 10 suited or better, and king queen suited, or jack 10 suited, like something like that. Maybe they have 10% of hands, something like that. Other players maybe raise preflop under the gun with 20% of hands. I don't know the player that you're playing against, but I know that it's somewhere between, you know, 10 or 7 or 8% and 20, 25%. So automatically, just the simple act of them raising under the gun, the funnel went from 100% down to 10% or 20%. So it went from 100 to 20. In other words, 80% of hands or 90% of hands are no longer in that funnel. Let's say the flop comes. They bet the flop. What percent of hands that they raised pre-flop with are they betting the flop? Again, it might not be 100% because people don't typically continuation bet 100% of the time. Some players do, in which case their flop range is the exact same as their preflop range. But a lot of people don't see bet 100% of the time. They check 
some of the time. Like let's say they have ace, king, and diamonds, and the flop is seven, eight, nine, all spades. They might not bet. So therefore, when they do bet, some of the hands that they raised with preflop are no longer in their flop range. You can discount those hands, and so the range becomes narrower and narrower. And you do this street by street. So preflop, flop, turn, river. Every time someone takes an action, you're eliminating hands from their range, you're discounting hands based on the action they took, and you're only leaving the hands in their range that they would play this way. And so the funnel becomes narrower and narrower each subsequent action that your opponent takes, whether they're raising, they're calling, they're limping, they're check raising, they're three betting, that all reduces hands in their range. Now there are three principles of a funnel that I wanna impart on you. And this is super important because when I work with clients and I, I review hands with them, right? We talk strategy, we, we, you know, we're in person together, we're on a Zoom call, whatever it is, they're reviewing a hand with me and I ask them, Let's go through the hand range funnel. Tell me the types of hands they can have in this spot on the river. And they make mistakes. But if you follow these three principles, you're gonna reduce those mistakes when you're hand reading. So the first principle is that funnels always shrink. So they always shrink. So every time your opponent takes a certain action, their range gets narrower. And this is based on the first principle that they don't take that action with 100% of their hands. It almost never happens that way. That a, that a player plays all of their hands the exact same way. Let's say they bet the turn and the river comes a flush card and they go all in. Well, they're not gonna go all in with every hand they bet the turn with because some of the hands that they bet the turn with might check the river. Like if they were bluffing, maybe they check. Or if they had top pair, maybe they got scared that the flush card came and then they checked, right? Or they had two pair and they got scared that the flush card came so they checked. So when they do bet the river, not all the hands of the turn bet the river and therefore their range got narrower. So range funnels always shrink. And just like a funnel, when you pour water into a cylinder that goes into a cake bowl, it gets narrower and narrower. The same is true for a hand range funnel. Okay, so that number two is that funnels come in all shapes. Now, this is different than the funnel that you typically use to cook with because the funnel you use to cook with is very linear. It, it starts wide and it gets progressively narrower in a linear fashion. It goes directly down like this, right? But a hand range funnel isn't like that. And we just demonstrated that with preflop. When they're dealt in, it's 100%. But then when they raise preflop under the gun, it goes down to 10%. So it goes like this. And then if they see bet the flop with 100% of hands, it goes flat because their range stays the exact same from preflop to flop. But then when they bet the turn, it goes from 10% of hands, maybe to 1% of hands because most hands that bet the flop do not bet the turn. And most hands that bet the turn don't jam the river. So the funnel might go like this, then like this, then like this, then like this. They come in all shapes depending on which types of hands your opponent plays in that specific manner in that specific moment. So that's the second principle of a hand range funnel. The third principle of a hand range funnel is that hands that are gone from your opponent's range are gone forever. This is a classic mistake I see clients make. I'll ask them, hey, what types of hands can your opponent have on the river? And they'll tell me a hand like, oh, well, let's say the board is uh, 10, nine, six, four, deuce, okay? They'll be like, oh, well, he could have seven, eight. And I'm like, okay, but would he, you know, raise onto the gun with seven, eight. And they're like, no, he would never do that. He's a super tight player. And I'm like, well, then you can't have seven, eight on the river if their opponent would fold that hand out of the gun, right? Or if the board's 10, nine, six, four, deuce, they're like, well, he can have pocket fours. And I'm like, well, you bet the flop. Would he really check call the flop on 10, nine, six with pocket fours? They're like, no, he would never do that. Well, then I'm like, he can't have pocket fours because you discounted that hand on the flop because you bet and he called, so you eliminated pocket fours on the flop, therefore you cannot insert that hand back into their range on the river. So a hand that's gone from your opponent's range for any reason at any point in any time is gone forever. It's never in their range on a later street. So just like a funnel, right? When you, when you pour water into the funnel at the top and it goes to the bottom, it can't just go back up to the fucking top of the funnel. Like it, it just doesn't do that. Gravity pulls the liquid down into the funnel from the top to the bottom. So when you pull a hand range down from the top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel and you eliminate those hands street by street, you can't push those hands back up to the top of the funnel. It doesn't work like that. So a hand that's eliminated from your opponent's range is gone forever. So these principles are what helped my client make thousands of dollars in his home game because he adjusted his hand reading ability. And he started to figure out which spots people were likely to be bluffing in because he could figure out what types of hands they had in what certain situations. He started to use hand reading to apply to his own game. And he started to say to himself, wait a minute, I should be bluffing in this spot because most of my hands, most of the types of hands I have are very, very strong 
in this situation, and yes, in this one moment I'm bluffing, but most of the time I'm not bluffing, my opponents are gonna give me credit for a strong hand and therefore I'm gonna hold the trigger. And he took the bigger picture into consideration and did this based on not just the types of hands he has in this situation, but based on his image, which is hugely important for home games. Because you know that you play with the same players weeks, months, years on end, and you build up a certain image and those players have a certain image. So if you can leverage that and combine that with hand reading, it's a super powerful tactic. So I hope this helped you. If you want my help on this, uh, check the links in the description. There's a free hand rating system for those of you that want it. Uh, you could also uh, apply to work with me and I could help you on your poker journey. I've helped hundreds of clients over the years to improve at hand reading and crush home games and their casino games as well. So hit me up, I'm happy to help you on your journey. I hope this helped you. Subscribe to this channel. I'm putting up more content during this period on how to crush home games. I've been working with a lot of people in the home game sector, I've been playing a lot of home games the past year myself. So I'm putting out a lot of content for this topic. I hope this helped you. I'm Alex Trelli. I'll see you in the next one.